to please welcome back to the program investigative reporter with Epic Time, Joshua Phillip. Josh, thank you for taking the time again, as always. Hey, pleasure as always, Larry. Thank you. Josh, uh, reportedly, China government is reporting a decline in the number of reported cases. Is that true? Do you believe them? It is complete disinformation, and we've been getting reports on the ground that disprove it. The Chinese Communist Party used that narrative for two things. One is to try to jumpstart its economy because they're risking economic collapse. The other is to paint this picture like China has handled this well, which they have not, but that's what they're trying to tell the West right now. People in China on the ground are telling us that they are still sick and they're being sent home, that they're not being given treatment. The situation is just as bad as before, but people are not even receiving care now. Josh, we're also hearing that um, of the, what, some 80,000 people or so that have been reported uh, as having contracted uh, coronavirus, uh, 80% of them or so have recovered. Is that also disinformation? Uh, I would not trust any numbers coming out of the Chinese Communist Party right now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't trust anything, anything coming from them. <laughs> what is China doing right now, then? The Chinese Communist Party right now is launching a large-scale disinformation operation to try to hide the fact that this virus came from you know, possibly a Chinese lab and started in China and spread from China. They're trying to say now this came from the United States. They're trying to export their own model for dealing with it. And they're launching large-scale programs to try to say it's racist if you say it came from China. Their whole focus right now is on information war. Uh, Josh, the working assumption, I thought, was that it came from bats, uh, B-A-T-S, bats, uh, at this village uh, in, in China. Are you telling us that you believe it is equally uh, as, as plausible that it was developed uh, in a lab as some sort of bio-warfare? Uh, not clear if it was a bio-warfare program, but I would say the evidence saying it came from a laboratory is much, much higher than it coming from a lab. I'm sorry, much higher than it coming from uh, the seafood market. It is a bat coronavirus. It has two parts to it. One appears to be the Zhao Shan bat, which was submitted to the data bank by the Chinese military. The other part that makes it human transmittable being the spikes, those come from the SARS virus, it appears. So this appears to be a recombination of the SARS virus and the Zhao Shan bat virus. The question is, how did they combine? It just happens that that laboratory would have had both of those, the one 20 miles up the road from the ground zero of this virus in, in Wuhan. Joshua Phillip is my guest. He is an investigative reporter with Epic Time. He's been covering the Chinese Communist Party for some years. Josh, how many people do you think are infected in China? How many people do you think have, been, have, have died as a result of the coronavirus in China? Um, I don't want to give any hard estimates at this point until we can prove it. Um, early on, we did, some, uh, we did some phone calls. We put the number just in Wuhan alone at at least 10,000 dead. That was about two weeks in. And so who knows where it's at now. We, we believe the numbers are much, much higher than what's being reported, and it's continuing like this. Mm -hmm. Josh, when we last talked, I asked you to give uh, the Trump administration a grade for their response. You gave him a B. Uh, as you know, he uh, banned travel to uh, China uh, in late January, well before other countries did. He was roundly criticized for that, including by Joe Biden, who called the uh, Trump-China uh, travel ban, quote, hysterica a xenophobia, close quote. How do you think the Trump administration is doing now? Well, I, I think that they're declaring a national emergency is the proper step to take. I think him uh, putting a travel ban on Europe now as well is the proper step to take. Uh, I would still, I, I give him a cautious B, B plus mm -hmm. right now currently, uh, mainly because I'm, I'm still a bit concerned with the fact that he doesn't seem to think this is going to be that big. You know, he tweeted about, uh, the fact that the common flu might kill around 50,000 a year, is this really much worse? Personally, I think it's going to be a lot worse, but, you know, we'll have to see. We'll mm -hmm. have to see. I'm going by what we're seeing in China right now, and it seems to be a whole lot worse there, but we'll have to see. Josh, why has Italy been hit so hard? Uh, hard to say. So right now the virus is spreading in four different places mainly, which is, of course, mainland China, South Korea, Iran, and Italy. In Iran, they're, you know, of course, covering up the numbers. There, there was an article in Washington Post that says you can see the mass graves from, from space. It's showing these, uh, these mass mm -hmm. graves. You can see them from space. There's so many of them. 
In South Korea, it's unclear whether we're getting the real numbers as well. Some local journalists there have been telling us that it's much worse possibly than what they're saying. We'll have to see. In Italy, it's transparent. And so the numbers are very high. Hmm. Josh, we have just a minute left. I've been asked by a number of listeners to ask you about this Chinese doctor who apparently was trying to sound the alarm, and the Chinese authorities were trying to shut him up. He's now dead. Yeah, correct. So there were eight doctors, eight doctors who tried telling the world about what was happening, eight doctors arrested. This was in early December. This, this is the real story here, because the, the world should have known earlier. The world should have known earlier that this was happening. And had China acted sooner, instead of throwing these doctors in prison and punishing them, and that one did die, instead of doing that, they could have prevented this. They could have locked things down, things down sooner. They could have been transparent with the West so that we would know how to deal with it right now. Josh Phillip, investigative reporter, Epic Time, also host of Crossroads. As always, Josh, thank you so much. We'll be checking in with you down the road.